because because those functions not necessarily would have been held by the October one two thousand thirteen deadline. Yes, they would have because the problem is this is no because <laughs> your statement of works and all the different things that you've done have gone up through two thousand fifteen. So those are ongoing processes, not adherent to the deadline of 2013, which is what he outlined about what had to be delivered in 2013. Audit, audit, all those different things did not have a deadline are ongoing. So you answered my question. He would not have had a contract, or it could have not been a contract. It would have been an RFP process, and you would have been awarded it or not had you been bid for an RFP. But you didn't do that. We went through the other direction. That's what I'm trying to understand because it seems like a conflict of interest when you all had the ability to influence the original RFP. And that's the problem I'm having. And, and that's exactly the reason why CMS and other government agencies always separate anything having to do with project management or IBM Well, I understand or, that. I'm talking about your CAI's influence of work on the original RFP and then how this kind of cut bungled and then went over this way. I'm trying to understand that. And it seems like you benefited greatly from us not awarding it to a vendor. The, the, the total benefits to CAI are not the $108 million. It's an infrastructure that's in DIS that takes a very small percentage of those dollars to make sure that the staff, I mean, the people, the vendors are on the ground so that you can meet your, the state's deadlines. I understand that. Okay. What I'm saying is if you had influence in creating RFP, this gets back to us as Representative Walker, and Senator Chesterfield's on a question, and I'll let this go, so I know it's going to be for lunch. But again, if you had direct influence on the language of the creation of the RFP, which precluded you from bidding on the RFP, and then the RFP had gone to the vendor, you may not have had the contract that you had. But what happened was we didn't get a vendor, we couldn't go to the second vendor. Not sure why we, we have that on the state procurement, all those questions out there. But then it went to you to fill all these holes, which you benefited from financially. So there, there is where it lies for me a conflict, a conflict of interest. Because it went down the path that benefited you the most. And that is problematic. And I don't know why that decision was made, who made that decision, again, why it was made. It just seems like that happened. And not necessarily just y'all benefited. I think there were a lot of others that benefited because of the lack of the lack of guidance within the contract, the lack of um, not being able to find where we can hold people accountable for the deliverables and, and seek recruitment from them. But, that that's where I'm trying to find and understand why it was done this way. 